This is Dr. Mintz. I wanted to go over chest radiography. This is a portable chest, AP portable chest. And um, just a brief commentary about how to approach these. You always want to evaluate the mediastinum, not just the heart size, but see what you can in the mediastinum. And what you can see is a portion of the thoracic aorta. You see the distal aortic arch here and the descending thoracic aorta. And the other mediastinal contours represent different structures. Uh, but you cannot, of course, see the detail you can on a CT. But overall, this looks like a big heart. And I don't see any obvious mass in the mediastinum. So the mediastinal silhouette, except for the cardiomegaly, is pretty unremarkable. You want to look at the lungs themselves and see if they're clear, if there are consolidations. And you also want to look for pleural effusions. And there can be masses. So there can be patchy areas of infiltrate, which I don't see here. There can be masses. Uh, and pleural fluid. Uh, there are a number of different things that you can encounter on, on a frontal chest radiograph. Frontal chest radiograph or frontal image is uh, a generic term that uh, basically means it could be AP or PA depending on the projection and most portables of course are going to be uh, AP projection which gives you more magnification of the mediastinum than a PA chest would. <clears throat> uh, but look at the vessels. Important to evaluate the vessels. Here you see pulmonary vessels that are tapering nicely. They are very, very hard to see at all as you follow them out distally. So the pulmonary vasculature in this case looks pretty normal. Uh, along with seeing the thoracic aorta here, we know that the pulmonary artery is immediately inferior to the aortic arch and it branches extending to the right and left as the right pulmonary artery and left pulmonary artery respectively. Uh, we don't see that main central structure of the pulmonary artery as well, but you can see the right main pulmonary artery coming out here and then branching to give off these areas of branching in the right hilar region. The left main pulmonary artery does something different. The right kind of courses directly laterally and then inferiorly before giving off its branches. The left main pulmonary artery reaches up and over the left main stem bronchus. Here you can see the uh, trachea branching into right and left main stem bronchi. And the left main pulmonary artery happens to course superior and posterior to the left main stem uh, bronchus. And so it tends to be a little tighter in into the middle here uh, compared with the right but it still is giving off its branches like that. And you can see its proximal branches re, uh, achieving a very narrow, uh, fine kind of caliber more distally. OK. So another structure that you can see here in the mediastinum is right around here is where the azagous vein comes in and joins the superior vena cava. I'm not sure we're really seeing that clearly here, but that's one of my favorite structures in the chest, the azagous vein and the azagous arch, because the azagous vein comes from the abdomen and courses along the paraspinal structures in the paravertebral region and then courses anteriorly to join into the superior vena cava right around here. So it's just a, an interesting anatomic feature that we can sometimes appreciate.
Here's the same chest, and here we see a little difference in the appearance. Once again, the heart looks big, and right, and now we can go ahead and measure that, and it should be about the size of half the transverse diameter of the chest. So here we're getting 20 centimeters there, and then if we measure from the midline of the chest, right where the middle of the, th the vertebral body is, to the lateral wall of the chest, this is 16 centimeters compared with 20. So this is clearly cardiomegaly, meaning the, the heart size is more than half the transverse diameter of the chest, and that's what I just demonstrated to you. So that's cardiomegaly. Uh, I'm going to look again through here for any mediastinal adenopathy or other masses that might be. I do not see any. I see uh, the trachea bifurcation. I see the bifurcation here and it bifurcates into a right main stem and left main stem bronchus. We can see the aortic arch perhaps a little bit better on this image and you can see the descending thoracic aorta coursing down like that. So going back up the descending thoracic aorta to the aortic arch and then we know the ascending aorta is coming out of the left ventricle right in this area so we can't appreciate that of course on this radiograph here we see this kind of ovoid opacity and it's superimposed exactly on where I expect the superior vena cava to be and the superior vena cava is right in this area and empties into the right atrium because the superior vena cava of course has deoxygenated blood coming back from the system from the systemic circulation <clears throat> so the superior vena cava is right here and what we're seeing here some of it is just rib shadow but I think there's a little confluence of opacities uh, probably a little bit of this this increased density here is related to the arch of the azagous vein, which again comes from below, courses superiorly, and then dives anteriorly to join the SVC. So you have some of this flow from the subdiaphragmatic regions, the abdomen and lower extremities. Most of it comes up through the inferior vena cava, but a smaller amount comes up through the azagous vein system and then empties into the superior vena cava but in any event you have a superior vena cava emptying into the right atrium and you have the inferior vena cava emptying into the right atrium and the right atrium is more laterally positioned here toward the right and it of course empties into the right ventricle which then gives its flow out through the pulmonary artery, the main pulmonary artery then branching into right and left main pulmonary arteries. But this is a heart, this is a large heart, and if we look at the lung markings, we see that there's an increase in the lung markings, and we are seeing the pulmonary vessels more distally than we did on the earlier film, and that is quite a contrast. This is the initial series showing cardiomegaly but no fullness of the pulmonary vessels and then this image shows that there is a much busier appearance to the pulmonary vessels and you can follow them out nearly all the way to the far periphery of the lung and that's pulmonary vascular congestion and that's uh, because the pulmonary vessels are are experiencing greater uh, pressure so you have pulmonary arteries and veins in here and if the left heart fails well the pulmonary venous return from the lungs has to go back into the left heart and if there's a backup of pressure that is exhibited as fullness distension prominence of these vessels in in the lungs, these pulmonary vessels, 
So pr pulmonary vascular congestion is a term that's used and it is a sign of congestive failure. So if the left heart is failing, the left ventricle is failing, then that pressure backs up to the left atrium, which is around here, and that left atrial pressure uh, directly transmits to the pulmonary venous structures, which are draining blood from the, from the lungs, and that's why we see this pulmonary vascular congestion as a direct reflection of left heart failure. I think this patient might be in right and left heart failure because I think this is the uh, a shadow of the azagous vein which itself looks distended and that of course is unlike the pulmonary venous return here the azagous vein is systemic venous return and that systemic venous return I think is distended giving this prominent shadow of the arch of the azagous vein. So I think we have global heart failure in this case, but don't split those hairs uh, too much. I think it's important that you understand that this is cardiomegaly and that certainly there is left heart failure and that that is the cause of the pulmonary vascular congestion. And uh, I think it's also important to have a general idea of how to go about looking at a chest radiograph like this and to include an evaluation of the mediastinum, not just the size of the heart, but to look for the shadows that you can recognize, the aortic arch, the azagous vein, if it is indeed is visible, the uh, trachea bifurcating into right and left mainstem bronchi, and be aware that there is a right main pulmonary artery that's coming out here and giving off its branches, and a left main pulmonary artery which arches up and over left main stem bronchus and gives out its branches here in that manner. So besides evaluation of the mediastinum and in, in those steps, I would look over the lungs carefully and make sure you look at the costophrenic angles carefully to look for any small pleural effusion. You want to make sure that the lung markings are going all the way out to the periphery and that there is not a little pneumothorax hiding in there somewhere. And it's also very important to take advantage of the fact that we see a lot of the osseous structures of the chest here, and you can see the vertebral bodies pretty well, and it would be very easy to miss a lot of abnormalities in the thoracic vertebrae if you didn't turn your attention to them specifically at some point during your review of the chest radiograph, and the same is true for other bones. So other things that may be uh, picked up are metastatic disease, uh, even degenerative disease, uh, and uh, primary bone tumors, things of that sort can be picked up occasionally on a chest radiograph. So it's important to have that kind of manner of going about the review of all of the structures so that you have some standardized way that you can look things over. For me, that would be mediastinum first and foremost, including cognizance, cognizance of the individual structures that are present and where they are and reviewing them just in case there's some obvious abnormality in those specific areas. Here you can see the descending thoracic aorta has a normal little curve to it but occasionally it can be obviously aneurysmal, either here in the arch or in the descending portion. Then I move on to the lungs from the mediastinum and review those carefully, and, and then also look at the pleural recesses and the pleural spaces for not only pleural fluid but for pneumothorax, and then a, a detailed review of the osseous structures I think is appropriate. Here's a lateral view. Lateral view uh, has a lot of information and we can usually tell which is the right and which is the left diaphragm. The uh, 
left diaphragm is closer to the imaging plate and therefore has less magnification so the right hemidiaphragm usually projects farther posteriorly in a well positioned lateral view and that is subtle but holds true in this case uh, here you see the vertebral bodies which is a much better look at the vertebral bodies than on the frontal view but very often in a portable chest you won't have a lateral view here you can tell that the heart is enlarged but generally on a lateral view the heart will creep up about one-third of the way of a lateral radiograph and this I can see that this is cardiac shadow at least up until here so that's at least half of the distance uh, along the, the sternum that the heart is uh, in close proximity so this distance here is about what I would say the heart is up against the sternum for that 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 much distance and that's quite a bit more than we would expect normally on a lateral view where it might only be uh, a third of the distance up the the length of the sternum so that's just a, a, a general quick overview one first look at the chest radiograph how to approach it what's there and what you need to look